up everybody this is Johnny 2000 welcome back to another episode now we all have those shows that we consider the best and the worst and then we all have those episodes we consider the best and the worst but when you're trying to get like a friend that hasn't seen the show into a series you probably have opinions you know like like the second season's the best the third season's the best that's kind of what I want to get into today I want to tell you guys about some of the best seasons of television that I think really define the show. So I did the top 10 episodes of teen television, then I did the top 10 teen shows of the 2000s. Now I kind of want to do the top seasons of these shows. See, I just love talking about these shows. I can never get enough of like, Ned's Declassified, Big Time Rush, Wizards. It's just so fun. So I'm going to keep making videos like this. Um, similar to why I made the last video is like, you know, the episodes as an art form, you know, the 10 or 20 minute like moments in time of these shows was, it was a lot of fun to kind of give them a space to be judged on that on their own. And I also think there's a lot to be said about seasons, like the seasons of the show particularly. So first we got Ned's Declassified season three. So season one and two of Ned's Declassified are great, very establishing, and most shows I would say their first season could sometimes be their best, but I definitely think Ned's Declassified got into the nitty gritty of the most interesting themes of the show in season three. Like in season one and two, like they got to do first day, lockers, like all the topics that you would associate with, you know, being with this middle school show. But I do think they started to shine when they started covering topics that were way beyond that. Like the emotional and social issues of you know, Cookie, Moe's, their relationships, and it really brought everything together. It was a great mix of like humor, friendship, and of course, survival tips. I just loved seeing them talk about like graduation and like the, the scary stuff that comes with making the transition to high school, which I felt like, you know, shows like That's So Raven, Hannah Montana, Zach and Cody, like they all, it was all like kind of a background part of their lives, school. But for Ned's Declassified, there are some people that school is their whole life. And that was, the show was really good at kind of showing the characters' personalities, but also like emphasizing school's impact on growing up and development. It was the perfect wrap up to one of the most creative and helpful teen shows of all time. And I definitely love it. Next we have Big Time Rush season one. So. I really love the later seasons of Big Time Rush, but I definitely feel like from a storytelling and art perspective, we can give season one a really good score because, the, you know, Scott Fellows made N Ned's The Classified, and that was great because it was like talking about the middle school stuff, but now Big Time Rush is when things got a little bit more serialized. Like every episode was still episodic, but it was, it was cool how they gave them an overarching they gave them an overarching plot of like, okay, they need to make their first album. And this is like such a golden season one trope of like, okay, the, the very main goal that you set up in the pilot also finished by the end of the season. And they did such a good job at making that like a beginning, middle and end in like a really mature way that most teen shows were not doing at the time. Like Unfabulous didn't set up a goal at the beginning of the season and finish it by the end. Neither did like iCarly or, th there was something about Big Time Rush. They were somehow able to capture the comedy that Drake and Josh and Ned's Declassified had, but also prove that a beginning, middle and end story really could do well for a season. And the characters were just so likable and I just love how much they tried with this series. And I definitely think the writers, the actors, everything was at its peak in this season. And then we have Hannah Montana season three. So love all of Hannah Montana, definitely. Season three is the most interesting because it's similar to Ned's Declassified. It's like when we got to get past the preliminary issues you would have as a teen pop star and start getting into the more growing up issues. Hannah Montana did such a good job at doing less generic type episodes and leaning into Miley's character as a part of her growing up, keeping the secret as Hannah Montana and still attending school. Like there, it just, it got extra funnier. It got, it, 
it got more absurd. It really like had fun with it and I had so much fun watching it growing up. I just remember this being the season where I was like, okay, cool, like we're aware of Miley's stakes and now, you know, we're just kind of living through her and there's just some really good episodes in here like her learning how to drive or, um, you know, choosing somebody in the band to be with. Like there was just so many interesting plots. Um, we saw a deeper dive into the identity and the challenge, especially the, the issue with identity, like where pop star comes in versus, you know, normal teenage girl, but like how that affects her identity. It like just feels like it's a deeper version of what the show started out as. And plus all the songs were the best in this season. That's my bias, but it's true. Then we got iCarly season two. Season two was definitely the best season of iCarly because it's because the first season did a really good job at setting up all the web show and internet issues but the season two really carried out like the more stake driven plot lines it, it got really weird after season three so i would like say season two is definitely the best because they had that special i go to japan which is a really right before freddie's voice got a little deep and like they had the most specials in this, like I Fight Shelby Marks and Carly, Sam and Freddy's antics basically reach so many new heights and we get to see like how bad the internet really gets. So if I had to ever recommend like something as like a complete season, it would be I Carly season two. Especially since it's got like 39 episodes, I think. Then we got Zeke and Luther season three. So this is a show I never really got to talk about on this channel, but I really do like Zeke and Luther. It's kind of like Big Time Rush um, with their goal of becoming a, the best boy band, but Zeke and Luther are trying to become the best skateboarders. And I don't usually see a lot of uh, male-driven male -driven, uh, teen shows. To be a boy in like the in your teenage years is very like rebellious, very like skateboarding, sports and everything. But this show does such a good job at like drawing you in with the sports and the rebellion of like these two like characters, Zeke and Luther. But then it also ties in the emotional parts of life too, like identity and school. And it just does such a good job at being the bridge between like masculinity and femininity and these boys' insecurities to be the best. And I think they do slightly better than Big Time Rush in the sense of them trying to be in touch with themselves and their careers. This is definitely a really good show. And the comedy is really well written. I don't know the story behind this production, but there's just something about it that's so impressive. Now we got Zoe 101 season two. So Zoe 101 was very interesting. I definitely think season one was a little bit of like a, you know, they were like missing a lot. Like it was good to set up the world and everything, but with the characters moving around, it felt like it didn't really hit its stride until the second season. It's because the best part of that show is like kind of like how the kids get to live so freely and act like adults. Um, and you kind of can take this whole you know, the, the school part of it all is kind of like swept aside so you could focus on those things. And they were just so focused on the drama that the show really brought out in this season, like like Zoe's relationships and, the, and how people relate to one another. It just gets a lot more intense in this season. So I would say like Zoe 101's best season is season two. Then we get to True Jackson VP season one. That is the best season of True Jackson's VP is definitely season one. Um, it was the perfect introduction from the pilot to the season finale of how, um, of how True Jackson's arc is and like what she's intending, you know, and just, just how, how well she's handling being a CEO. And with, you know, like with, it's so fun to watch her interact with the boss and then uh, Amanda and then also her friends. Like, like season one has just like really captured me at the time when, when the show was new and I definitely look back and love that season the most. It's so fun to watch like a workplace setting go like crazy with this like kid in it. Then we got The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody season two. So Sweet Life of Zack and Cody season two, that's another one where it's like the first season was really good, but it didn't really hit its stride until the second season. Cause you know, they were so focused on this hotel idea. And I feel like 
at season two, they gave themselves permission to lean more into the characters outside of the setting. And, you know, Zach and Cody are just so good at, as like those Drake and Josh type characters where they're like kind of against each other. Their dynamic is just so interesting aside from the show. And I feel like the writing was definitely one of the most memorable seasons of the 2000s. Like you can ask anybody and they'll always remember Sweet Life. And uh, I, I, I would argue that like some of the best episodes and most well-known episodes were in season two. Then uh, I want to end with uh, Sunny with a Chance. Uh, Sunny with a Chance definitely did its had its stride with season two. Um, I loved the first season because it was like Sunny getting involved in show business and like kind of how it relates to her dream and her getting over that. But season two is like when it kind of. Uh, you know, like, some of the shows are really good with their introduction seasons, like True Jackson and Big Time Rush. Like, it's really cool to watch them start out. Um, but in this instance, I definitely think it's interesting to watch where they're going, especially, like, with Sunny with a Chance, the main um, plot point is the relationship dynamic between Sunny, her castmates, and Chad Dylan Cooper. And they leaned in to all of that for the second season. And I just I just love watching the sketches. It was like relatable. Um, I definitely think Sunny with a Chance season two is the absolute pinnacle of teen television. Oh, and they had so many good musical numbers that they actually did not have to have. Like, don't wear the pants. Yeah, that was really interesting. The comedy was on point and the character development added so much more depth to uh, what made Sunny with a Chance such a fun show to watch. Thank you guys so much for watching, I appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to Johnny2000.